Hi all, I have another very exciting notable game to show you, this time of Dragolub Velimirovich, born 1942. He died actually just last year from the time of this video, at May 22nd, 2014, at the age of 72. He was an international master in 1971. He became grandmaster in 1973. He became U Yugoslav champion, well, multi-time Yugoslav champion, 1970, 1975, and 1997. Nicknamed the boss, sometimes called the Yugoslav Tau. He was a well-liked, innovative, and feared attacking tactician. Never a serious threat for the world title. Nevertheless, he, he contested three interzonals and was ranked within the top 100 of the world's players for about 20 years before um, 1969 through to 1989 when it was his his most active. Let's have a look at a fantastic game of his against Itzvan Sison. It was played in the Amsterdam tournament in 1974. I think IBM was the sponsor of this tournament. Velimirovic kicked off with e4. His opponent, Sison, played the Sicilian defence. You'll note that a lot of these notable exciting games are in the battleground of the Sicilian defence. It really is a fighting system for both sides. Knight f3, d6. We have the open Sicilian emerging. A slightly unusual um, move order here. We saw knight f6 there instead of c takes d4 it is uh perfectly playable as well this move order knight c3 and now c takes d4 knight takes d4 a6 bishop c4 e6 bishop drops back bishop e7 and now the configuration here is typical of what Vladimirovich uh, specialized in in it's sometimes called like the Velimirovich variation. He puts his bishop on e3 here, knight c6, and now queen e2, which guards that g4 square. No need for f3, and prepares castling queen side. A very aggressive setup, very logical, harmonious. Queen c7, and now he castles queen side. Black castles. And now we see king b1. No rush to play an attacking move like g4 or something. It's just king b1, putting the king a bit safer. Black plays b5. And note the vulnerability of the e4 pawn here. There seems to be possibilities for black playing b4 to this lodge tonight on c3. White has to play quite resourcefully based on black central counterplay here. And as we've seen in the previous notable game, actually, sometimes black has certain loose piece targets, like e7 can sometimes be loose to tactically compensate for the weakness of the e4 pawn. We see knight takes c6, queen takes c6. And here now, bishop d4, already quite a tactical move, factoring in b4. b4 wasn't played, black put more pressure on e4 with bishop b7, very logical. But let's imagine black did play b4. Tactically, white can now actually play bishop takes f6. Bishop takes f6 and play now knight d5 based on this skewer possibility. It's an interesting line. And not as amazingly clear as you might think. Uh, yeah, of, of course black doesn't want to move back the bishop. But if he takes... Bishop takes, we have the skewer, queen e8, bishop takes, queen e5 looks dangerous because black's got that dark square bishop, but white can play c4 here protecting and be better after takes, put the bishop back. Yes, and this is a little bit scary, but it, it should be technically uh, better for white. White's uh, doing okay here, it's the exchange up. So yeah, bishop d4, not minding possibility of b4, bishop b7, and now securing e4 a bit with rook h e1, but also looking at the x-ray possibilities against this bishop here. Black played queen c7. Let's imagine again if b4 is played here. 
this analysis seems to be echoing after after one e4 white's game is in its last throws that's a famous quotation uh, that Brown, so the e4 pawn looking at how it can be attacked in these variations seems quite logical so here why wasn't b4 played well knight d5 e takes e takes and we're on e7 here and now imagine knight takes d5 strongest here would be bishop takes g7 after takes white is just better here after this getting this very very nice position here this is the like the strongest path if b4 was played uh, you might think here why didn't um white play bishop takes d5 black after takes here has queen e6 and it's not so clear okay so anyway so b4 seems to be taking account of behind the scenes queen c7 now finally white does something about b4 white plays a3 so the center is secure even more so without this b4 possibility rook a c8 and now f4 the pawn might dare to go to e5 or g4 g5 would help white's control of the center in particular the d5 square as well as an attack against the king black reacts now with e5 let's say black didn't do something so committal with pawn structure you might not like this move and think why didn't black continue without such a committal pawn move well let's imagine rook f8 g4 comes at black's king and this position actually even better than g5 might be f5 this position here is you know this beef b3 bishop is really dangerous this is the kind of uh fisher sozin style attack as well white's just better here with g5 on the cards if white can keep control of d5 this can be used positionally g5 to dislodge that knight white's going to be better so black reacts quickly here with e5 but there is a slightly loose piece target here the e7 bishop is only protected by the queen f takes e5 d takes e5 and it looks as though black you know might be close to having a great game here uh, particularly you know if the bishop went back isn't there some possibilities here like bishop takes a3 ouch the knight is not so secure with that pawn there it can be undermined so actually in this position there was a much better move played instead of retreating the bishop somewhere can you guess what white plays here if i give you five seconds Okay, the knight gets out of the way. This is the next tactical target. It gets out of the way of being loose here, potentially, with knight d5. Trying to look at e7 instead as a possibility. The queen attacks. Bishop takes d5 is played. E takes d5. And now white is threatening. Bishop takes e5. And other stuff. So it's the pawn takes on d4. Queen takes e7, and black tries to restore material equality with queen takes h2 here. Trying to keep the material balance. Now, white plays a very, very nice tactical move, which will kind some very, very good calculation. Can you guess what white plays? You might want to pause the video and come back when, you, when, you, when you've worked it out. What does white, what can white afford to play here? It's an amazing tactical sequence coming up here so this is the time to pause the video and i'll carry on after a few seconds from now okay vladimirovic plays d6 and it looks as though d7 is a really strong possibility now this this dangerous pass pawn black plays a move which seems to repel the queen away rook c e eight but there's a big but here in terms of forcing sequence with a sting on the end of the tail as fisher might say in some of his uh, or larry evans in some of his annotations in fisher's my 60 memorable games the sting at the end of the tail 
So can you see a forcing sequence with, with a major, major sting at the end of the tail hair? I'll give you five seconds again. White to play hair. Okay, the forcing sequence begins. Bishop takes f7. So black can't move the king. He's just going to lose that rook. He has to take. And the point is... Queen takes e8, check. Blanks the exchange down, he can't just move the rook, he has to take the queen. Rook takes e8, check. Blanks forced to play rook f8. d7, threatening to take in queen or just queen. So black seems to have a defensive move here though. Have you factored this in, in your calculations here? Doesn't black have a defensive move in this position to cover both d8 and rook takes f8? The dual threats. A dual defense is needed. Queen d6. I might resign. Oh dear, he didn't see this. No, just kidding. Just kidding. I didn't. I guess I didn't have you. T uh, I wasn't that convincing about that, was I? Just kidding. He didn't resign here. He saw this defensive move. No panic. Yes, the defensive dual defense is available. So d8, black can take with the queen. Rook takes, black can take with the queen. But there's something about this position which emerged just recently, actually. Recent news about the position <laughs> was this f file. In particular, removal of that f7 pawn. You think it's so critical tactically? Black has two pawns instead of the classic three. What's the criticalness of that pawn missing? Like a tooth missing. Why is it so important in this position? If I give you five seconds here, what would you play with white here? So five seconds, starting from now, the final move of the game. Okay, I hope you found, found this. I've given you a clue on the F file. Rook F1. The piece is pinned. Celebrate it. The F8 rook is pinned. Major celebrations are cried out for when a piece is pinned. Black is overloaded here. He can't handle now this position. He resigned. What can Black do if he takes? We queen with check. If he takes, we just rook takes F8. Mating, either rook will do. End of game. There's just no defense. A crushing win here. Elegant, simple win. Seemingly simple on the surface, but uh, in the variations, you know, black had, you know, it seemed before various possibilities, various points in the game, but white may have had things under control behind the scenes against the B4 possibilities, which is classic counterplay against E4 in the Sicilian defense. I've seen, as we've seen time and time again. So a fantastic player. And in fact, let's look at quite a few of his notable games over the next few you know, days and weeks. He's one of the, the great exponents you know, of dynamic, aggressive chess. And his variation of Sicilian is particularly uh, aggressive and devastating sometimes. And this is just one one. Uh, Nice example of Velimirovic's play. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.